Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm XDSL. Hi there. Um, I uh, I bought a new keyboard, which and that's what this video is about. It is my thoughts on said keyboard. And it's early thoughts, just like when I got my Ergo Doc. So I'm giving you some early thoughts, and then I'll follow up with with more robust, bigger, later thoughts. I guess later. Um, I had an Ergo Doc, which is a split keyboard. Um, I've got videos on my channel, uh, which is very much in favour of layers and using your thumbs to do things other than just spacebar. Uh, it's a keyboard I really like. I got on really well with it. And I know why criticizing that keyboard and me buying a new keyboard is because I like keyboards, not, not not because there's anything wrong with that one. It's a great keyboard still. Uh, I just wanted something traditional, I guess, just something else. And I wanted to go back to Buckland Springs because I had a Buckland Spring many years ago and I wanted Buckland Spring again. Um, so what did I do? I went with, uh, with I went to this website, keyboardcompany.com. Uh, so keyboardco.com, I think it is. Yeah, keyboardco.com. Um, and... Uh, <sighs> And, and yeah, they're the only people I could find that seemed to ship the Endura Pro in England. So and that's what I went with, a Unicomp Endura Pro. Uh, they ship this bad boy here uh, to me. Uh, it seems to be constantly out of fucking stock, um, like literally constantly. So I got a message the other day. I'm sitting hanging out with my daughter and I'm like, I get a message on my phone, like beep. And I was like, oh, fucking newsletter. I nearly closed, just closed. And I was like, that's from the keyboard. What have I, what newsletter? I remember, I like, don't remember signing up. I think I might be signed up for this for literally a year. I, it might be less. I don't know. I, I swear I signed up for a long time ago. It's like, it's, 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 it's there. It's there. And I, I, I just did a quick mental finance check, made sure your daughter didn't need anything. And I was like, fuck it, bye. I didn't even think about it. I was just like, add to basket, bye, done. Send it to me. Uh, and that's exactly what they did. Um, and it's arrived and it was, very boring packaging. It was just a brown box, uh, but it was all wrapped in that very big bubble wrap inside. So even though people talk about unboxing experiences, it was a box with your keyboard in, which is, in my mind, the best packaging. Uh, I opened it up. Uh, I checked all the keys. Everything seemed to be set right because whenever you buy a Buckling Spring keyboard, there's always a chance that the keys aren't going to be set quite right and you have to like, pull the cap off and straighten the uh, spring. That's just part of Buckling Springs. Even the old IBMs used to do that. Uh, but it was 130, £129, pound, plus I paid £6 to get the express delivery, which is how it got here now, so £135, pound, I guess. Um, and yeah, it is it is, it is, is here. Now, I will actually show you the actual keyboard. Also, uh, if you are if you want, you can also go to Unicomp website directly, where it's $129. So I guess I didn't get that great a deal on it, because that should be like you know, 90 quid or something. But uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, and there it is, and there it is. Yeah, there's a little USB. Look, USB. Yeah, I don't have a red mark on the USB. I don't know what that's on the picture for. Now, Unicom, uh, this is also, if you look at the layout on this one, uh, if you look at the layout on this one, you can see the small enter key. And then you look at the layout of the one I've got, and it is actually an English keyboard with the big enter key and the actual pound sign there. So it's actually a, an English keyboard, which is nice. Um, the big thing about Endura, about um, Unicom, is that in theory, they're like the same as the old Model M's. In in theory, like they're that robust and stuff because they're using the, the same equipment, I want to say, um, or at least very similar. Uh, and uh, they haven't, they, they've modernized it in ways to just make it work. Because if you buy a, uh, if you buy a Model M keyboard now, which is the old IBM Model M's, the, the big one, the epic legendary keyboards, uh, you're going to have to do some rewiring or put it through some kind of device to translate it over to modern day key inputs because it is not a modern day key. It's very old. It, it, it's an AT that connects, a big old AT connector. Um, or the point point of buying something from Unicom is it's just got a USB cable, just plug it in. Uh, so anyway, let's switch over to the camera where I'm going to show you the keyboard. Now I don't have that set up. I don't, I'm just I'm literally just going to take my camera off the top of my monitor and uh, just you know pick it up uh, and then hold it. Uh, that's the plan because I don't know really how else I can do this because I don't have a camera looking down anymore. Uh, so yeah, there we go. There is right there. There is my keyboard. Um, couple of things first of all. Uh, it is head too heavy to pick it with one hand, like like genuinely, like 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 if I try and pick this up with one hand, like 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 that is, it's too heavy, right? It's too heavy for that. It's just nonsense. It's too heavy for that. It's a two hand job, or at least yeah, it's a two hand job. Um, you'll notice it's got the nipple here. Now, it, oh, my one only came with the red nipple. I was, I think if you buy from Unicom, you get like three nipples. You get one rough nipple, and you get like a green one, a black one. You get a few nipples, right? I got one. I got the one attached, the red one, which I don't really care about. Like, it's fine. I'll just buy my own nipple. If I, I, ideally, I, I might buy a blue one. I know blue ones exist. I might buy a blue one. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that, that's right there. And it's a longer stalk than I would have expected. Like, like, like I don't know if the, the sense of scale here comes across. But yeah, it's a lot longer than I expected, which is a good thing. It, it feels like a 
like a gear stick. It doesn't feel like the little like like the close little nubbins you had on uh, on the old the old ThinkPads. And there's your left and right click down here, which is really nice. And they're very very. Um, let's make sure I've got my pointer somewhere. It's not going to cause a problem here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, chunky old keys, but satisfying. It feels like it goes with the keyboard to be that chunky. Uh, the um, size of it, even though it's a full-size keyboard, and I had an Ergo Docs, and before that I had a 60%, this is actually smaller footprint than my Ergo Docs, because my Ergo Docs is two halves that separate. So once you do that, it's actually a bigger than this. This is actually a base saving for me, which is insane when you think about it, because it's huge. Uh the keys are exactly what I expected. Yeah, the travel there is lovely. Um, beautiful travel. Luxurious travel, one could say. Luxurious. Yeah. Uh, it is it's really nice. Uh, the keys have a little bit of wobble to them, which I'm not thrilled with. But that is part of the uh, the old buckling. They're, they're not going to be as stable as cherries because they're just, you know, the, the mechanism is not designed that way. Um, the plastic is beautiful. It's very solid plastic, very rough feeling, very sturdy feeling plastic. Um, the actual keyboard itself um, does have a bit of deck flex. Um, don't know how much of that. Yeah, you can probably hear that on. You can probably hear that. So there is some deck flex there. Uh, and I, I don't know if I feel like maybe if I just tighten the screws up underneath, that'll sort it out. But um, even then, it's not. It's like it's only when I'm like when I'm being critical, but I even notice it, like using it last night uh, and yesterday, I, I didn't, I didn't feel like that deck flex mattered. You know, it just, it just something I noticed when I'm like, when I'm being pedantic about it. Um, Unicomp, there's a few people online say they've got bad quality. Um, and then a few more people said they sorted that recently. Um, so here's my thoughts on this. This keyboard, I have no quality issues. Everything's fine, except some very minor finishing things. Now, I don't know if you can see that enter key right there, but there's definitely some bowing there, um, which is the, obviously a molding issue, which, you know, it's fine. It doesn't catch anything. It's fine. But I feel like I feel like that could have been better, right? And I don't know if you can see some of the edges of the keys haven't been finished, like sanded quite right, um, which, again, is... I mean, I'm being... I'm trying to be critical and, and like, like, honest with it, but... I don't care about any of this stuff. Well, that's fine. The keys will work. Who gives a shit if the edges aren't finished? I'm not pressing the edges. And also, I've like, if you're interested in computers and keyboards and stuff, you've probably got a little bit of like sandpaper, like like the fine sandpaper. You can just like dip, dip, like give it a little scrubbing. You're done. It's like you're gonna take these keys off at some point anyway. Like who gives you know who gives a shit? The, the, the bowing on the enter key is like something that I'm like oh, you know that, that's an obvious bit where you could have looked at you could have eyeball that and gone maybe we'd, maybe we swap the enter key before we send it out. But you know. Uh, plastic wise there's a few areas like here i don't know if you can see yeah, you can see it on the camera just there where the molding looks like it i don't know it's puckered a little bit um but again i also like there you go that there and there and i think it's a little bit there yeah like but also at the same time these aren't things i care about so like I'm only saying all this on video. If you ask me what I think of the keyboard, like, you know, and you're not you're asking me to be a critical YouTube person, I'm like, the keys feel great, but it's heavy. It's all right, yeah, it's all right. Um, the nubbin, the little nipple thing, uh, travel, the, the travel on it, it feels like it hits the other keys. Um, and you can illustrate that because if I go here like this, look, see that? There, like, if I hold down H, it goes, like, a little bit further. But at the same time, using it, I don't for a second feel right i don't for a second feel like it's stopping the motion like i feel like it's hitting maximum speed before it hits the side of the key so yeah it's hard to yeah i have been typing i have caught it a little bit when i've been typing but that's my own fault for not hitting the key center especially not on that row actually there's no reason not hitting these are center like you hit the edge of b so if you hit the h and g you should be hitting the center not off center so i shouldn't really be hitting it anyway but i have hit it a couple of times which has been like oh that's weird um the buttons here are not being nice and clear. They're in perfect position, really. When you type in, you can just do your thing and then just, you know, click. Uh, they are in perfect position. Ideally, and if, again, if I had to, if someone was, like, asking me to be uber critical, put a little wheel here for scrolling and make that double up as a middle click. Just a little wheel there. It seems like, separate these two buttons, put the wheel in the middle. It seems like an obvious thing to do because the shape of this is rounded anyway. Even if you just have a thumb sensor, so it's just like a sensor, not even a wheel. Like, I feel like you could have put a wheel on this. I, but then again... Also, like, you're using this for quick corrections and stuff. You're not, you know, 
And I can probably do something with Linux to make these two buttons work as a middle click or, or a scroll key. There's definitely, there's almost definitely some stuff I can do with that. So I'll have a look into that later in the week and probably get back to you guys. Also, the Windows logo here on this Windows key. And again, I'm planning on changing these for penguin keys um, or blank ones. But uh, this print is too far down. Um, if you look at this one, it's dead center. You look at this one, and it's too far down. So I think that's that's definitely a, an issue. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't care. But it's definitely like, you know, come on, guys, sort that out. Um, but all the other keys that actually matter are dead center. They're the ones I say that they're exact to the top left where they should, where they should be. Um, also, I like top left for my legends instead of uh, instead of center. I like, I like top left; it makes more sense to me. Um, yeah, just I got no real criticisms other than that about things that matter. Now, criticisms of things that don't matter and really don't matter is this LED here. I don't know if you can see this. In fact, I'm going to turn off the lights here so you can get an idea of what I'm seeing. But like, there's fucking lens flare on it. That's it's so bright. There's fucking lens flare. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, it does not need to be that bright. And that's with, this is the sticker on top to, to get rid of the Unicom logo. This is that sticker that goes over the top. And because it was so bright, the original piece on the, on the original layout on there, and also I can probably show you uh, the original thingy here. Do, 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 So you see that's what it looked like originally, right? And also this fact, this picture's out of focus. Come on, dog. Come on, dudes. Uh, yeah, it had the Unicom logo. I fucking hated it. So I paid like like two pound plus plus like four pound delivery to get a sticker to get rid of the Unicom logo because I just loathe it. Um, so yeah, I did I did end up doing that. And uh, so before I put this sticker on top, I got a black sharpie and I coloured in the windows to dull it, and then I put that on top of it, thinking it would take the edge off it, and it has. It's still this fucking bright. That's ludicrous. Also, why is it blue? Like seriously, why? The, the Model M was green. Green was a nice digital color. I liked it. So I would have preferred it to be green, but I'm not against blue. But I think I, I see blue LEDs and so much stuff. I think blue LEDs may be cheaper than other LEDs. I think that might be the, the idea of the thing, actually. But I'm still, look, I don't know if you can see that. Look, look, look. By the number, just above the number nine. Look, look, just there. The fucking lens flare. That's how bright it is. So yeah, fuck that. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is actually kind of difficult to actually show you. So I'm going to try my best not to yeet my camera up over because again this is just a webcam i'm using i try not to drop the keyboard okay now underneath okay i don't know if you can yeah you can see that on the camera right see there's two little circles there the circle near the front of the keyboard the top of the screen is the uh the rubber that we had and there's one of them the, there's one of them the left one of them the right and there's nothing on the back the bigger circle is a little sticker i put is a rubber sticker i put on there that's supposed to be for furniture um because it was it was basically plastic on wood and it it was not nice and it made a scrapey sound when i moved it because there's no rubbers on the back so i just put four rubbers on the bottom and uh they're not perfect they're a bit spongy i really want to want the rub the very hard rubbery ones i've got some actually on order um but yeah that's that's like the fact that a keyboard that costs 130 quid um doesn't have rubbers on there already is stupid there are little feats with just the size as well but i'm not going to I'm not ne never gonna flip them out. I just like I'm happy enough. My keyboard be flat with a natural a natural leaning is fine. It's uh yeah. Overall though, am I happy with my purchase? Yes, very much so. Thoroughly enjoying typing on it. Um, and any of the caveats and criticisms I have, I'm just being pedantic. Um, things I've done with layout with X and let me in fact let me put my camera back. Whoa, I'm sorry. See, you'll, you'll be seasick, guys. I'm I'm trying to use my hand to cover it so you don't get seasick. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I've done it. There we go. Whoa. Okay. Um, so some of the things I've done is I've got it so that I've used uh some X key mapping stuff um so that I've got mm, my camera seems in the wrong place now. Um I hope so when I hold down caps lock, caps lock, when I tap it is escape. So when I'm in Vim, I can just hit caps lock because now having a full size keyboard, I never realized before how fucking far away escape is. So caps lock having two states where I tap it and it's and it's, it's escape. If I hold it, it's mapped to super or left meta key or windows key or whatever i'm gonna launch applications with it that is just perfect for me that's actually that's actually most of what i want now what i used on my ergo docs was i had a layer switch so when i'd hold down caps lock it'd be able to come layer one and then i could use q w e uh, to go last track play pause next track so all i've done is i've mapped that to be alt and q w e just it's just my, my thumb's still doing the work it's like it's a non-problem for me um so that's fine 
Uh, I would like to find a way, so when I hold down, yeah, because it's not really do it feasible, but I'd like to have it so when I hold down Alt and go H L J K, it mimics arrow keys. Probably a way to do that, but I'm not sure how we go about it. But I would like to hold out Alt and H J K and L become like you know left down up right like like Vim navigate like the, the Vim navigation doubles up as arrow keys. But it's not necessary because I've got arrow keys on my keyboard now, so it's like it's a, it's a non-issue really. I don't, you know, it's one of the things that's just in my head has been a thing. Um, I really one of the things that having a sixty percent and stuff for the last God knows how long is I didn't realize, but I think I kind of missed having like that nav cluster. Like, I kind of miss having home and end and, and insert and page up, page down. Like, I feel like that stuff that, you know, like, it adds to a quality of life. And as I said, I'm saving this space. It's not even that. Um, Things that, you know, things I'm, I'm not thrilled about with it. It's like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like it could have had a function like the F keys. Like it could have had like a little where where the no one uses the menu button, right? No one's using the menu button on a keyboard, right? It's just not there. You know, it brings up brings up the contents, the mouse contents menu. It's not something anyone uses. So make that a function key, and then give me F nine, F ten, F eleven, F twelve as media keys. Or even if you hold down function and press F five, your web browser. Like it's not useful, but also it's more useful than. I mean, it's more useful than the fucking than, than the menu key, right? Like, what if you're going to modernize the keyboard? Like, if you're going to if you're going to go accept that keyboards need modernizing, you're going to put Windows keys on on essentially a Model M design. Like, why not just do a little bit more and just you know add that function layer? I feel like that could probably sort you out. But anyway, these are just minor caveats. You know what you're buying with these things. Uh, if I had to be again, if I had to say the one thing I would the one thing I would change if I could is I would have a middle click. I think a middle click is something that if you're going to have a keyboard with a built-in mouse pointer, essentially, you, you know, the middle click and it's got it's got a um a white uh, the, the actual cable is is hardware white. It's hardwired in. It's not removable. Feel like it wouldn't have hurt to to have a U to have a USB C on the other end, or even in, or even because of the chunkiness of the keyboard, a USB like like an old printer cable, like you know, the USB printer cable, the AB cables, like one of those would have probably been fine as well, like chunk straight in there. It would have been nice to have the option to change the cable though. I'm not particularly abusive with my keyboards though, so I'm not I'm not foreseeing a future where I'm going to need to change the cable, but it would have been nice to have the option. But then again, I'm guessing if you just unscrew it, it's very serviceable. I'm guessing it's very serviceable inside, so it's probably not a concern. Uh, things to do left for me though. Is I've got to find a way to control the speed of this mouse pointer because it's just too fast. It's just way too fast. So I need to use some. I think I suppose I use FDev rules or something to FDev rules. No, I probably use LibInput to uh, to change the speed of that because it's just it needs to be. Like, I need to take a good twenty percent off the top before that's usable because um, at the moment it's just flying around everywhere. It's like it's good for if like it's good if I want to go from one end of the screen to the other. But like if I'm using this, I probably want to be. I probably want to make precise movements. I probably don't want to just like you know zoom across and just grab a window with it. Um, but yeah, I have found myself using it like more than I thought I would. And again, I think I'd use it more if it had a scroll wheel or if I had some kind of scroll key set up with it. Um, so yeah, I think I might see if I can have it so two buttons is scroll because that that seems like that would be the right that would be the right thing to do. Um, for, at least for me, you know, for, for my use case, it would be. Uh, my trackball is now off to my right on my mouse pad, and my mouse is the other side of my mouse pad. I've got a big mouse pad; it's fine. Um, feel like at this point, I've got too many input devices on my desk, so. I really would like, to be honest, I would really offload the mouse. I would really probably, like, the mouse would be the one that would go. Uh, but I play too many games. Because um, I love my, I love using my trackball. I love the tactileness of a trackball. Um, so I probably don't want to get my rhythm trackball. So I'm, I'm probably just going to end up with, like, leaving them both on the desk, to be honest. Um, probably move around my trackball a bit more. Um, but I do prefer a trackball for interacting with anything other than a game. But it lacks the precision for a game. And it's also it certainly lacks the... Uh, I don't know, the muscle memory I've developed, but being 40 and playing games on PC my whole life. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, Drew Pro, uh, keyboardcompany.co. Um, the keyboardcompany.co, yeah, keyboard.com, keyboardco.com. There you go. I, I looked at it. Uh, they're all right. They're fine. They're, I mean, everything works. You send them stuff and, you know, you make your order and they just send it to you. They don't ask you to make a fucking account, which I love. They just send you an order number through the post, through, through the email, through the post, through the email. Um, yeah, it's like they're 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 pretty good. Like I had I had no criticisms of them. They didn't fuck around. They just like I like the fact they didn't go make an account. I hate that shit. I don't want to make an account to buy shit. Just buy shit. You know, it makes sense for Amazon because you buy more than one shit. But I'm going to use Keyboard Co. Like what four times my whole life probably. You know, it's like so I don't need to make an account as long as I got my account number and they've got good customer service. There's no reason to worry about that. So they are fine. 
Um, I would. I only got one red nipple in my box. I don't know if I'm supposed to have more than one red nipple. Um, I feel like I'm supposed to have spare nipples. Uh, but again, I'm, I can buy my own nipples. It's fine. Also, I said nipple a lot in this video. Uh, yeah, they're good. Uh, yeah, they're good. Uh, Unicom, the build quality issues. There are, as I said, there are some niggles that I don't really care about because I'm, you know, I'm not really care about. It. But overall, I don't think there's a problem with the build the build of this keyboard. But it could be better. So, you know. Anyway, I rambled on for like 20 minutes. Unbelievable. This video is too long. Goodbye, I guess. Uh, don't forget, you can support me on patreon.com slash hexdsl. If you've got a spare pound, I will take it off your hands and use it to buy more keyboards. Goodbye.